I think after this movie it's safe to say that I will never judge a movie by its name ever again. I Want to Eat Your Pancreas was released in 2018 and is by Shinichiro Ushijima and is about a boy who has no friends who accidentally stumbles upon a girl's secret that she is about to die from pancreatic cancer. So they decide to spend the rest of their lives together, starting off a bit distant but growing closer with each interaction. And if you would have no idea about this movie, it's basically one of those movies that's known for making people cry. But after watching this, I think I can fully assure you that it's a lot more than just a simple tearjerker. So if you didn't already get the memo, this movie is extremely sad. I personally cried. Multiple times. And one of the most unusual decisions this movie takes is that it straight out outright tells you that this girl is going to die in the very first scene, so you'd expect that you wouldn't be as emotionally struck by it since you already know what's going to happen, but somehow this movie still hits you like a truck, which really is a testament to how great it is. And by doing so, this also puts you in the place of the protagonist, since both us and him know the eventual outcome of her life, so we start off not trying to get too close to her to prevent ourselves from carrying that emotional burden when it does happen, but we still end up falling in love with her all the same due to her charm, which is honestly just amazing. The plot of this movie is extremely heartfelt, I really love the exploration of the themes of living, death and friendship slash love which is really interesting because the relationship these two share isn't exactly one of partners or that of friends. It's a lot more complex than that. And this movie is also very similar to Your Lie in April which by the way is a perfect anime and Goodbye Eri in which they deal with the trope of this tragic girl meets boy storyline and how she teaches them how to live but then leaves too soon. And honestly this trope always has hit me right in the gut no matter the medium. I think just the fact that the protagonist never really gets to say thank you or goodbye to the person who changes them is what really hits me. And the entire execution of this plot was also beautiful. Like I really noticed this movie likes to spend a lot of time on those subtle moments of character interactions, you know, those moments where two people are talking which don't seem that interesting when you're first watching it but once the whole movie is done, it really puts into perspective how important those moments are. And I think this quote, we didn't know we were making memories, we were just having fun, perfectly describes how I feel like about those situations and it really does help you connect with these two characters on another level. The only problem that I can really say I have with the plot is that the transition to the ending or like the last act was a bit abrupt, like it kind of just happened out of nowhere and I get that that was probably intentional, it was probably supposed to shock you, but I still felt like they could have built up to it in some sort of way or foreshadowed it in some sort of way which I don't think they really did and kind of just makes me feel like it was just there for a shock value. And I don't really want to elaborate too much of what I feel about this because it does, you know, lend into spoilers but I'll just leave it as that. And one last thing to mention is the name of this movie which is rather weird but they somehow pulled it off which just shows how great this movie is like at the beginning this kind of phrase just seems very weird then it seems sort of quirky and kind of wholesome and towards the end it's just depression. The main protagonist of this movie is honestly amazing, I really liked how touching his arc was. Like he starts off rather uninteresting, kind of makes you feel like why is he the protagonist but he develops in such a great way that he deserves that title and by the end you just want to give him a giant hug because of how much he had to go through. Sakura's arc is also great, it's a lot more subtle compared to the protagonists but it is still there and I really liked how they were able to still humanize her character, like seeing her conflicts of living, dying and being afraid was really realistic and really liked how they were able to touch on that without making that the main focus of the story and detracting from our main protagonist's story. And the dynamic between the protagonist and Sakura was honestly just wholesome. It's the type of dynamic that really makes you wish that you were them and you had something like that in your life. Like I really appreciated how they were able to both teach each other something important about life and as a result they not only feel like a duo but also like distinct individuals which is really hard to pull off. However the dynamic can get a bit too perfect. Like first of all, it kind of just starts abruptly. She only really becomes friends with him because it's interesting, which I didn't find that to be that great of an excuse. 
And secondly, the whole trope of average loner guy mingles with popular pretty girl kind of really sets false expectations and it really tells people that are similar to the protagonist that they just need to keep doing the same thing that they've been doing, like you know, being lazy and eventually some pretty girls gonna fall head over heels for them and there's that. Like this type of too good to be true dynamic is also there in My Dress Up Darling as well as Tokyo Revengers to an extent, you know, in Takamichi's girlfriend. But the reason I say it's almost too perfect, not too perfect, is because it's not your typical romance and it does have that extra layer to it that these other romance animes don't really have. And aside from Sakura and the main protagonist, there's not many other characters that get development. This movie is mainly focused on these two, which I really did like. It allows these two to become a lot more fleshed out without feeling like the rest of the movie's half-baked. Like another example of where this is done wrong is A Silent Voice, where they spend a lot of time developing all the characters in the movie where some of them don't really feel like they get the screen time deserved. So the animation in this movie is very smooth as expected of a movie level budget and it's also often very beautiful to look at. And while I wouldn't say the animation is top tier like Your Name and Garden of Words, but it still has its own subtle beauty to it which I really liked. For example that fireworks scene and oh my god, that fireworks scene is probably my favorite of the entire movie and I'm pretty sure that's when I first started crying. Like the way it's shot, the OST, everything about it is just amazing. And the rest of the OST in this movie is also just great, I really like listening to it overall. Especially that credit sequence, like this is one of those credit sequences where by the time you reach it, all you can really say is, damn. Like it really just hits your soul, especially that song. So in conclusion, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas is just beautiful, and I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10, and recommend it to anybody who likes a tragic romance, especially one that will make you cry. It has an emotional yet profound plot with characters that will truly connect with you and a presentation that keeps you engaged. The only problem that I can have with this movie is that I wish it was more realistic with its behavior and how the characters interacted. But overall one thing I really didn't notice about this movie is that it probably has a lot of rewatch value. Like I noticed that there was a lot of things that had symbolism in this movie that I can't really put my finger on and I feel like by watching this movie I'll be able to understand that and gain an even higher level of respect for this movie than I already have. So here we are at the end of the video and I have one thing left to mention which I never really got to say throughout the rest of this review but I feel like this is the perfect time. While I was scrolling through some OSTs to listen to, I found a one comment on a YouTube video that perfectly captured how I feel about this movie. I wish I could meet someone like Sakura, someone who could change me. And all I gotta say to that is me too man, me too.